What? Yeah. No, I'm... Yeah, I'm behaving myself. I'm, no, I'm not playing in abandoned buildings. What? Again? Now. I suppose you had those people follow me again. Fine. Hey. This is Jimmy Farrow from Monty and the Farrow, and I want to thank all our subscribers. We have now passed 14,000 on our YouTube channel, but I want to ask our subscribers to take the next step for us and become a full-fledged member of Monty and the Farrow. Yeah, that's right, folks. There's three different levels to choose from. There's free shirts. There's free autographs. Just check it out and become a member of Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty and the Pharaoh. Later. you on the uh, territories uh program a couple weeks ago uh -huh. let me ask you something and i don't know do you not like greg Ganya? you look like you wanted to jump over the table and rip his throat out i was like man uh, patera looks pissed off well he pissed me off yeah we did that uh when did we do that back in uh march or april down in atlanta and um, uh, on the way down there, you know, we, we both live in uh, Minnesota. And so we, uh, they booked us on the same flight. And he said some off-color jokes, and uh, which kind of pissed me off. And so the next day down in Atlanta, some of that stuff bubbled up. It had nothing to do with uh, us being in the wrestling business. But, uh, yeah, just one of those things. It was, was the off-color stuff towards you or just in general about politics yeah. or something like that? No, towards me. Well, because I kind of felt like it, and I don't want to get too deep into it, but I kind of felt like that because, you, you know, obviously that whole McDonald's bullshit – is a very sensitive subject, and I felt like he was taking shots at you, and I was like, damn, dude. And it looked like you were really getting pissed off at him about that. Well, well, that fucking Jimmy Brunzel was the worst. Uh-oh. And, th and then Medusa, that douchebag jumps in. And, <laughs> you know, what, what the hell? She wasn't even in the business. Uh, when that, I think she was in grade school when, when all that shit went down. Yeah, she doesn't have a clue what happened. Yeah, that's for sure. But I, I forgave them because they're ignorant and stupid and, you know, you know how it is. Well, who who would have known that Brunzel used to, was a big pill dealer too? That was, that was a little shocking what? news for me. Really? Oh, he, yeah, he, he, he was a pharmacist. He, <laughs> wow. He always, he always had a. But, you know, 90% of that stuff was legal back in those days, you know, that he was talking about. Nowadays, uh, you, you'd be hard to, like Quaaludes, they stopped making those, what, in, uh, God, I don't remember, 80, 90, no, it was before that. Well, Ken, Kenny, did you ever take Quaaludes? Because I never took them, but I heard they were pretty wicked. No. No, no, I I never I never took quaaludes. By the time I found out about quaaludes, they had outlawed them. Mm. They, they stopped making them. But uh, I I took some stuff that uh, Halcyon, 
You ne remember about Hell no, Chaos? No, never heard of it. Uh, they were little pills that were shaped like little houses. Okay. Yeah, that's why uh, the Halcyon gimmick. But uh, I wasn't much of a pill guy. And, uh, you know, I, I basically, I didn't smoke pot maybe three times in my life. Okay. And uh, uh, I was a beer guy. I, I drank my beer. You know, I, I, I remember times that I'd be in a uh, room with five, six, seven guys, you know. And I, I was so, well, I, I think everybody drank beer. Uh, but shit, they were doing the other stuff. And Roddy Piper came in. And, uh, but I remember that. Roddy Piper comes in the room. Buddy Rose is there. Buddy Rose had just sent out for uh, uh, an eight eight ball of cocaine. <laughs> yeah. So about half an hour later, after uh, uh, when Piper comes in, Buddy says, "Well, don't leave. I I just ordered an eight ball." And. Uh, uh, Rowdy's eyes lit up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> and here about, I'm not kidding, 15, 20 minutes later, here's a knock on the door. Wow. And sure enough, sure enough. This was in, uh, man, uh, somewhere in New Jersey. Okay. They, and, they deliver uh, faster than a pizza place. Nice. It's impressive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, jeez. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, this guy comes in, and Piper, uh, uh, or uh, Buddy, Buddy Rose takes uh, eight ball, gives the guy 650 bucks, I think, uh, whatever it was. It's too expensive back then. <laughs> yeah, it was. Well, wow. What is it now? I don't know. I don't do it now. <laughs> I'm, th I'm thinking es about back in those days. I thought, I thought it was like half that es much. Es wow. Gagne, es Gagne and Brunzel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're the wrong people are talking. We gotta. By the way, Ken, were you by any chance like also getting pissed at Greg Gagne because he has tennis legs and he was the son of Vern and he's got got away with quite a bit of a push in his career? Or, or am I wrong about that? No, no, that didn't bother me because I knew the business. Yeah, okay. And uh, okay. I knew Greg. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I was in the '72 Olympic Games over in Munich, Germany. Uh, Vern brought the whole family over there. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, Greg, uh, uh, after I competed in the Olympics a couple of days later, we, uh, uh, Greg says, are you going to go anywhere here in Europe? I says, yeah. Gonna go jump on a train and not even pay attention. And so that he says, can I come along? I says, yeah. And so we uh, went out and, uh, to the train uh, station, got on a train headed for, uh, uh, where the hell were we going? Uh, uh, where the hell? Uh, we were going to Austria, Vienna. So that uh, Vienna was our first stop. And uh, we got off there and stayed there a night. And uh, we went down, found a casino, lost all our money. Oy. <laughs> no, we didn't. But anyway, then uh, the next morning we get up and we went over to uh, Czechoslovakia, over to uh, Bratislava. And... Uh, uh, we get off the train, and we're standing there in the uh, uh, terminal. Uh, this girl comes up to me. She was a reporter during the Olympic Games, and she she looked just like Sophia Loren. Ooh. I, I am not kidding. Wow. Yeah, and, yeah wow. Yeah. yeah. So I... I she introduces me. I introduce uh, Greg to her and myself, and 
She says, where are you guys staying? I said, uh, we haven't made reservations yet. And she says, wow, there's not very many rooms around here. So the first night, we wound up staying at a resort uh, about 30 miles out of town. It's the only room we could get. So uh, she says, uh, uh, my parents are in town, so I can't have you over to the our apartment. But uh, she gives me her phone number. When you guys get back uh, tomorrow from that resort, call me. And I'll give you some sightseeing uh, tours. So that's what we did. Next day we got back. We called her. And, uh, God, she was nice. But the thing is, her her uh, parents were in town. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's a real PG ending. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ken, Patrick Rowe fan out there wants to know who's the funniest guy you knew in wrestling. Ooh. Oh, there was two of them. It was a toss-up. Bobby the Brain Heenan and Baron Von Raschke the Claw. Baron Von Raschke had a sense of humor? Really? Oh, God. Interesting. Yeah, he did ban you all day long. He'd have you in stitches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you have like a when you say deadpan? What do you have a dry humor? Because Bobby Bobby was over the top. Yeah. What was he like? The opposite approach, but just as effectively funny. Exactly. Nice, nice. Exactly. Baron Von Raschke, get a load of that. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to, Ken. I'm sorry. I wanted to ask.